We are live. <laughs> the fun has arrived. <laughs> Throw back. I know. <laughs> but that's, that's what it made me think of. Huh? Tarzan. I know. Tarzan? Yeah, it's Tarzan. I had to think. That's what it made me think of. Wasn't was just... it um, Rosie O'Donnell that, that was that ape? Yes. Yes, it was. Whatever happened to Rosie? Didn't she get Rosie canceled for saying the N word or something? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Anyway. I wanted to start with some chit chatter before we get into it um, with things that are kind of like along the lines of what we'll be talking about, which is romance tonight. Works for me. Um, but did you did y'all hear about the whole Danny Lynn situation? Mm, that's the one that was or Danny Lee yellow Lee. bone, but not really a yellow bone, right? Right. She came out with a song called Yellow Bone, except she's. Caucasian. I mean, she's Latina, but she's a Caucasian Latina. Yeah, she's she's one of them. So mixed that you know it doesn't. Oh, and her song is trash. Should also the, song is <laughs> the song is boo boo. Like, well, the song was, was like Yellow Bone. That's what he wants, or something like that. And apparently, it was directed towards. I feel so dumb every time I say his name, Da Baby. Like, please, why, why, why is that her name? Um. It was directed towards his the like his baby's mom because oh. I guess going back and forth between the two of them and his the mom of his kids who is actually like a brown to darker skinned black woman. She's an unambiguous mm -hmm. black woman. And so she came out with a song, Yellow Bone, that's what he wants. It's kind of like a dig to her. But then we just found out, I don't know if it was today, yesterday, who knows, who cares, that the baby dumped her. I'm just like, I guess she, she, she made a song directing it at the mother of his children. Like that yes. is just so childish. Ugh. I'm just like, oh God. Trash. trash, 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 trash. <laughs> I cannot. Also, like she's not, she's not full black. So using the term yellow bone is not her term. So she straight colonized a term to well, be. She kind of petty. exposed herself because people thought she was at least mixed and maybe had some like African Greek and African ancestry. But then people found old photos of her, and I guess she's been like tanning heavily. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's. Was, like, I'm not surprised. Shake my damn head, Lord. <laughs> I can't with Troy. What there are no words. I'm tired of the, like, why y'all got to keep getting yourselves exposed out here? Just be genuine. You don't have to be exposed. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like trolling Black women has become a trend. Yeah. And, like, inciting anger from Black people has become a marketing tool. <sighs> I mean, there's no such thing as bad publicity, right? Exactly. Just, mm. oh, we're talking about that Danielle, whatever Danielle. her name is, the one that was dating the baby, or whatever his name is. Listen, I sound so old right now. Okay, isn't it strange saying that, the baby? Like, it's just weird. Yeah, because we emphasize the duh. <laughs> the duh. It does not roll off the tongue. Like, I'm not supposed to be like, the baby. The, the baby, baby. <laughs> the baby. <laughs> say, it without, say it without overemphasizing the duh. You can't. The the because no. if I say it's the baby, I don't know if it, it doesn't sound the same. Yeah, it doesn't sound like you're saying the baby. It sounds like you're saying the baby. That's funny. <laughs> Look, every time I have to say his name, I get mad. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm already not going to be a fan of his music like that. Like I've listened to some songs where he's had. Um, where he's been featured that I enjoyed his verse, but other than that, I'm not gonna like go out of my way to seek out his music. Mm. Well, oh my God, the baby looks like a foot and needs to be stopped. <laughs> 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 it's too late at night for this. <laughs> okay, so in other news, I've been watching um, 
gosh, what was it I told you I was watching last night? Bling Empire on Netflix. Has anyone started watching that yet? That's the one where you said it was like the, it was like a petty game show ver thing? No, it's literally the reality show version of Crazy Rich Asians. Oh, wow. It's about these super rich Asians in LA and it's a reality show. And the whole time I was watching it, there are a whole bunch of characters, but the whole time I was watching it, I was like, it's so crazy how in every level of society, it doesn't matter how rich or how high up in the socioeconomic stratus, there are still men that are just utter and complete trash. <laughs> I was just like, why is everyone's male partner on this show trash? <laughs> Despite how oh my gosh. I'm just like, this is so sad. But yeah, I'm, I've am i been enjoying it. I think I'm going to do a full review when I'm done. I'm only four episodes in, but it's very entertaining. I highly recommend. I just, yeah, it's on the list. When I actually feel like watching TV, then I will do it. Because sometimes... The stuff y'all be having me watch, I tell myself I'm gonna watch one episode and then it'd be like three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so I have to just be very cognizant to trust y'all, but to trust y'all with limits. So. <laughs> yeah, it, it's entertaining, but it's not, I don't know, for me, it's not really binge worthy. Oh, but it's okay. like, it's entertaining. Like I could stop, like I'd, I could easily stop after four episodes. I was like, all right, I'm gonna stop and like finish. Um, it gives me very much like Real Housewives vibes in a way. Oh, yeah. But I'm not as toxic. Like the toxicity is different. Like the people on the show, there's like a strong core group of friends, which is fun to watch. It's fun to watch people who are genuinely friends, who enjoy each other's company. But then you have these little like petty moments where you're just like, damn, that was so petty. And then some of the characters on the show are truly just, either lack self-awareness or there's this one girl who's in this incredibly toxic relationship and everybody around her can see how toxic it is. And watching her boyfriend manipulate her is painful to the point where they're in couples therapy and she's literally telling him and the therapist that she wants to leave him, she wants to break up. And he's like, work through it we're gonna grow stronger da, 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 da. so the therapist is like okay um step out of the room and i'm gonna talk to her for a second so he steps out of the room and and sh the therapist is like you want to leave don't you she's like oh my god i want to leave I'm, i can't do this anymore and he's literally out there and the camera crew catches him on his knees praying and he's like in the name of jesus i just pray that we get through this like, <laughs> you know, this is a terrible segue into romance. You know that, right? <laughs> it's it's appropriate though because I feel like I I mean I am an avid romance reader. I've been reading romance since I was eleven. So you know, there there are a lot of times where toxicity is displayed as romantic, and I think that's problematic too. You know, because. It was interesting because on the show, it's like on the, the way the show starts off is it introduces them as this like hot and heavy, super in love, and then everything just quickly unravels. Mm -hmm. And you see how manipulative he is. And it's like, you know that place where unless you've been in, a, in an emotionally abusive relationship, you can't even put words to what's happening to you. Yeah. Like you, you can't see your way out of the situation. You're just like, I just love him so much. And I believe in him. And, da, da, da. and meanwhile, people on the other side, on the outside looking in are like, wow, you are being emotionally manipulated. He is literally just like yo-yoing you back and forth and completely destroying your peace of mind. And you have no idea what's happening. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm just saying, brace yourself. If you haven't watched the show yet, it's triggering if you've ever been in an emotionally abusive relationship. Because I was getting triggered as fuck. I was like, oh, oh, oh my God. There were so many moments I had to pause and I was just like, you need to leave him. <laughs> <laughs> now, please leave. But yeah, I highly recommend the show. Well. With that being said, hi everyone. Welcome Wonderful to Black segue. Pearls. <laughs> it's like, welcome to Black Pearls Podcast. If you guys are unfamiliar with what we do here, we talk about whatever we want, whenever we want. And uh, no, usually our podcasts are not book related, 
but sometimes we randomly throw books in here. But the podcasts are for having real chats about real things. And today we're talking about romance, since apparently the consumerist world has decided that February is the month of love. Yes. So have you, well, Brittany, I know you haven't been reading <laughs> I'm not even going to pretend like you have, but Troy, have you read any good romance lately or? Um, that I really, really liked? Not necessarily. Like they were fine, but I've been doing a lot of rereading recently. So I don't think that counts because I literally posted about everything I've been rereading last year about my faves of 2020. Yeah. So, but not really anything that I think I'd be like, oh my God, guys, if you love romance, you need to read this. But what have you been rereading though? I'm curious now. I, ooh. <coughs> oh my God. You okay? I'm sorry. I literally <laughs> almost died. Um, I'm sorry. I'm drinking water and I just almost choked. <laughs> um, I reread um, Dear Ava, and I still love that book. Um, I, I can't my... remember the author, because that name, isn't that, what is the name? Go to my handle. It's like she writes a lot of, she's very prolific. <laughs> and isn't, it doesn't, Shen, Shine, Shen? No, it's not Shen, is it? It's not LJ Shen, is it? No, it's, um... Ooh, child, y'all know. For, uh, I, I always say her. I don't know how to say it. Is it Isla or it's oh, Isla Madden Mills. Mills Madden. Yeah, this Isla Madden Mills. Madden Mills, something like that. Okay. I reread that one, um, and then I reread. What was the other one I reread? Oh, that's what it was. I reread Attraction by Penny Reed because I was trying to figure out why people liked it so much because I still hate that book. <laughs> And I reread it, and it did not change my feelings about that book. I still hated it. I only like her um, her brothers series. I can't remember their names right now. The brothers, um, you know, you know the um, series I'm talking about by her. The brothers. It's like they're these brothers, and they all have red hair and red beards. And this is gonna bug me. Um, oh, oh, oh! What's the series name? I do know what you're talking about. I have one of them in my um, phone. The Winston Brothers. There we yeah, go. Yeah, there we go. Those are the only books I really liked by her. There was this one other book that I kind of liked, but I was a little uncomfortable by how she represented the, the one of the female characters. I think she was supposed to be autistic. Mm -hmm. And the representation made me feel a little bit funny. Like, I'm not saying that it was wrong, but it just made me uncomfortable. So I would have to reread it and see exactly why. You know, sometimes when you're reading something and you're uncomfortable and you don't know if you're uncomfortable because you don't agree with the representation or if you're just uncomfortable because it's something that you need to like figure out within yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So it did make me uncomfortable and I couldn't quite put my finger on what it was. I was like, I don't know if I'm uncomfortable because I don't agree with the way this character is being presented or if there's something else, you know, maybe there's some prejudice in me that I need to seek out. I don't know, dude, but I need to reread it. Um, Listen, see how I really feel. This because attraction book is like the third book in like a three part book. And it's really ridiculous that there's three parts because each book is like not even a fourth of a normal size book. Oh, hell no. Mm -hmm. And I was so irritated when I found that out. Like, this is literally a money grab, but it okay. Was a money grab. Yeah. I liked the first book. But again, they they end so abruptly that I was just like, I had no choice but to like the first book because nothing really happens in it. Mm, the second that. book was okay. The third book enraged me. Oh wow. Enraged. Like I mean, actually to the point where it was like an uncomfortable enraged. And if anyone wants to actually know why I absolutely like I go into depth on Goodreads about it. But basically, yeah. the main character, Martin, his dad's, like, really rich, right? And he hates his dad. Okay. And for good reason. He hates his dad for good reason. And this is a trigger warning. So if you don't want to hear this next part, you might want to click off for a second. I forgot to put my trigger warning banner up. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, his father gets his stepmother oh, no. to... Quote unquote, seduce him. Stop it. Oh, okay. This, Stop this it. boy's Wait a minute. minor when it happens. I swear, he's a minor when it happens, right? <gasps> oh, no. And he's, and like, she's obsessed with him. And he's just like, 
what I'm, the I'm so right? right now. So oh he God. hates him, right? And the main girl tells now she knows this happened to him. She tells him that he should basically just get over it and that he should just feel indifferent about it. Oh, I was just like, because his, his, his whole point is that he wants to get revenge on his dad because his dad puts like all this, um, all these shares and money and stuff in his yeah. name. So he's like, oh, bet all this stuff is mine now. So I'm going to go sell all this information and Damn. ruin you. Right? Damn. And oh, so God. she's like, oh, you shouldn't want to so do weird. that. Like, it's just, just let him be. Like, there's no point. Revenge isn't necessary. I'll just like, are yeah, you I telling a, an assault victim? How he oh, should- there's so many things wrong with the description of this book. Yeah, oh this, is, this is a dumpster fire. I was <laughs> so angry. And the fact that I went to the book and so many people loved it. I was just like, huh. the same book. They can love that, but they don't like when a guy grabs a girl to kiss her. Oh, girl. Whoa. You've opened up a can of worms. <laughs> but, like, that's that's assault. And I know yeah. that men do not, like, for some reason, the fact that it's a guy, somehow they overlooked that. Because if it was a female, all of book, tw- all of book Twitter would have been in uproar. That author would have been canceled yesterday. Yeah. I agree. Like, oh, ugh. ugh. And to make it worse, he 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 does he does eventually just like oh yeah you're right my dad's not worth it no. I'm not gonna do this I was just like no let me let me make this clear he's not that great of a person like he's not he's actually kind of a dick but he's I was just like but like, granted that he had all this trauma in his life I was just like it's warranted because <laughs> then like the whole thing was his mom was like an actress because both of them are like have affluent parents like her mom is like I don't remember if she's a congresswoman or if she was like a she was political, basically. And um, his mom was an actress. She died at this point. But basically, the, she used him as like a purse. Like, oh, oh look, I have a son. God. So he did not have any love in his life. So There's I was like, so his much. anger makes a lot of sense. Right. It does. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I'm disgusted. <laughs> you know, it's so interesting because now that you talk about this, I feel like a lot of romance writers who write like the dark romance they try to do that same type of thing where they take these like taboo um subject matters and stuff and they try to make it i guess somewhat palatable and it's a very fine line when you write really dark stuff it's a very fine line and it always makes me really uncomfortable when i feel like it's not being done well or that it's being exploitative or just dangerous and then like people like love it it always makes me really uncomfortable because i'm just like what about this do you love like are you critically reading this and then when you try to criticize it people are like well why would you read dark romance then it's supposed to be dark it's supposed to be and i'm just like yes but it's supposed to be dark in the sense that it's almost like psychologically you're asking certain questions of the reader it's not supposed to be dark as in you're literally disgusted and there, you know, immoral things going on and being promoted as being okay. <laughs> I don't like, I'm not a romance reader, but I always have to ask the question of why do authors need to even get close to that line? Like there's so much to write about in our world. Why we why we even gotta get close to that? You know, it's just okay. like so some example, things I just don't agree with. Like, for example, there is a book that I read recently, and I'm actually scrolling through my Amazon Kindle right now because I'm trying to find the name of it because I had mixed feelings. But it was a quote unquote dark romance, and it was about um something that is like something that I'm so passionate about that I was very hesitant to read it because this is probably one of the few things that gets me really emotional, which is human trafficking. They made a romance about human trafficking? Yeah, it was like a mafia based, like the mafia was in the background of the story and it was like an anti-hero, which means the guy's like really bad and like, has killed people and is in the mafia and is not a good person. And then the girl wasn't everything that she seemed because the book opens up with her being like basically like auctioned off in this auction. 
Oh, of course. But my problem with it, I'm not going to spoil it. I mean, I can't remember the name of it. I have to scroll and see if I can remember it. I had so many issues with it. A, human trafficking is such like a serious, serious thing that happens um, more often than people would ever want and to believe. Right. And so when you, when you have that in a book, I feel like it needs to be taken very seriously. And I think the author used it as a plot device. Yeah, it sounds like so she's that, emphasizing it. So it wasn't even like it was a plot. You know, it wasn't even like, okay, this is part of the plot. This is very serious. This is something that the, the you know, one of the main characters is going through. It was used as a plot device to cause tension in their romantic relationship. And that's what <gasps> upset me. And just, what? What? Yeah, it was very upsetting. And I, I tried to, I mean, I finished it, but I was just kind of like, I'm still I'm still trying to gather my thoughts because I'm gonna talk about it on my channel. But I just I, I just can't <laughs> I can't rock with that. Like I just can't rock with using huge human rights issues as plot devices. It's one thing if it's actually integral to the story, it's integral to the character development. You know, because I've read stories before where human trafficking is a part of the story and it's like devastating and gut wrenching, and you learn something, and you go through this journey with the characters. And I've read stories like that before. Some of them even having like plot lines where there's romance involved. But when it's simply just used as something to move the story along in the in a way that brings the characters closer together into a relationship, I can't agree with it. Just why, like. Mm. Why? Just no. It's just. It's like, oh, I need to put some edge on this. Let's make her a human trafficking victim. Why? <laughs> Why? Listen, no. I don't even like regular romance. I can't. <laughs> you really kind of have to have a really tough stomach sometimes when you read dark romance because it can get so like oh my God, am I actually like, do I need to go see a therapist type insane? But, but see, Troy, that's what I mean by like, there's a certain way to write dark romance where there's a tension involved in the writing between like the backdrop of the story, the character development, and these really dark things going on. It's almost psychological in a way. It reminds me of people who write psychological thrillers. It really does. Like people who write psychological th thrillers and horror. It's along that same line. The only difference is you're exploring a romantic relationship between the characters. That's literally the only difference. So I think that there's a, there's a fine line and there's a certain way to write it. And that's why sometimes when people do it, it can come off very distasteful because they're, they're not using sensitivity with the writing. There is no, um, they're not, a, you can tell they're not approaching it in a way that it's so hard to put into words, but th they're not being sensitive about the top the subject matter at hand. Like if you're gonna write about, you know, like I just said, human trafficking or what are some the, kidnapping? That's a that's a big one in dark romance. There's a lot of kidnapping. There's a lot of like weird stuff going on with like women being sold into marriage. Like just very weird slavery type tropes going on. Mm -hmm. And if you're not gonna handle it in a serious in a serious way, then it can come off very distasteful. Like I remember, I think I told you all this, like one of the worst books I had ever read in my entire life was about ki kidnapping. Mm -hmm. It was a dark romance. And it's actually one of the most popular dark romances ever. And it's about this girl who gets kidnapped and it literally made me sick to my stomach. It made me feel like it wasn't supposed to be a romance. It was supposed to be like a horror. <laughs> like the horror story. Like the, the fact that they fell in love felt wrong. Like I was just like, she needs help. She needs therapy. She needs to be rescued. I should not feel like that when, if I'm reading a dark romance. I should still be able to root for the love story. I should not be feeling like she needs to be extricated. Um, yeah, I can't. <laughs> you know what this reminds me of? This isn't a, a romance, but it uh, has a similar aspect to it where in this anime, My Hero Academia, where the main vi uh, villain is named Homura. And he has this <sighs> tragic backstory. And he's a murderer. He murders people. Like, I mean, yeah, but... Left and I, right. I, know. <laughs> I know, me too, girl. I know. And that's what, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Put this out there. I'm 
kind of love him. The his that's, character is so well done. Exactly, but that's my point. My point is that Tomra is one of those psychological characters where you're sitting there like, but his his reasoning, you sit there and you're like, wait, that kind of that kind of makes sense. Those, he's a he's another killmonger where like yeah. his drive for why he's evil is actually like, wow, well, I mean, actually. I can't believe you. You hate heroes for a very good reason. And that's, and that's how you do a dark romance. Like At the end of the day, you have to be able to root for the couple. You shouldn't feel disgusted reading about them falling in love and like, you know, getting it on. Like you shouldn't feel sick to your stomach. Like, oh my God, please someone get her or get him out of there, get them the therapy <laughs> help that they need so they don't have to feel like the situation is okay. You should be able to still root for them because psychologically the author has presented the story in such a way that you may not agree with everything that's going on. It's probably against your moral code if you're a normal person, but you can understand, you can have sympathy for why they do the things that they do. And you're like, okay, I get it. Well, they did, went through X, Y, Z. No, they probably shouldn't be torturing people in the basement, but okay, that happened, that happened. Okay, all right. Um, somehow I'm still rooting for him and her to him end up together. <laughs> like, um, one, Tati says she needs the title of that book. Which one? Um, I guess, I don't know, whichever titles you have at the end, like you always do, just give a list. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, this is a very interesting statement by Steph. I think anti-heroes are different than villains. Mm -hmm. And I agree to a certain extent. For example, we'll take like the most, like, one of the most iconic anti-heroes of all time uh, that's currently been gracing our Marvel screens. It's just that now I can't think of his name to save my life. Uh, um, uh oh. What is his name? He has his own movies and he's a douche and <laughs> it's hilariously douchey. Why can I not remember this guy? He's in a red suit. Is Somebody this one that Ryan Reynolds plays? Yes, Ryan Reynolds' character. Oh, Deadpool. Thank you, Deadpool. It's this idea where like a lot of anti-heroes have a lot of selfish intentions behind what they do. So it's like, and Loki is also another good one and Punisher, look at y'all, all of those perfect examples of anti-heroes but there is a very selfish undertone to anti-heroes mm -hmm. anti-heroes do not um like like a villain a villain is also extremely selfish but a villain will never be like yo i'm gonna do this for the good of the people like an anti-hero just so happens to align with something that's positive but it's still all selfish like everything deadpool did was revenge Loki just mad because he realized his daddy wasn't his daddy. Mm. Um, the Punisher, I mean, we don't even have to get into that. I mean, he kind of, like everything he did, I was kind of like, that's well deserved. They deserve that. <laughs> they deserve that. <laughs> so it's just like, uh, I love an anti hero. I actually prefer, or anti heroes are some of my favorite storylines, but I'm also a huge sucker for like a really good villain. Yeah. A villain that's not one dimensional because we've gotten a couple good villains lately, and I'm just like, uh, yes, I love you, you're terrible, but I love you. <laughs> Real quick, um, I just want to say, chat, we aren't ignoring you guys when you guys give us answers, but a lot of times the chat comes it's after like we've already said something 15 20 seconds late. For yeah, so reason. when you guys give us the answers, we actually see the answers after we've already said them. Yeah, also, this is the book that you guys were talking about, or that Oshley was talking about. Violent There's another wow. one. The title is Violent Beginnings, Enemies Romance. <laughs> <laughs> is that really the title? Um, I think the title, yeah, Violent Beginnings is the title. Huh. The Dark Enemies to Lovers Mafia Romance, the Moretti Crime Family book too. Oh, wow. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> No. Okay. I wouldn't uh, recommend it, but if you want to know. What <laughs> I wouldn't is. recommend it. <laughs> so I just want to ask you guys some questions, obviously, because, you know, I don't do romance, but how do you guys feel about some of the romances that are coming out this year? Um, I have not really been keeping up with the new releases. I keep up with my favorite authors. Like I keep up with Christina C. Jones. I keep up with Love Belvin. 
I keep up with um, like some of the new adult authors that write like bully romances in a series that I really like. So I keep up with my favorite authors, but I don't necessarily keep up with new releases in general. I don't know if that makes sense. That makes sense. I, I agree with that. I don't think I necessarily do either, but I do follow like if I see like a romance booktuber um, or a uh, bookstagrammer like post something about a new release, I may look it. It depends. I'm being very um, shallow when I look at the covers and I'm like, oh, I probably won't read that. And I'll just move <laughs> on. And I may actually go back and read it. But, I, you know, at that point, it doesn't draw my attention enough. Like Oshale said, like there are authors that I try to keep up to date with. And I'm like, oh, OK, Christine. Jones has a book out. Well, okay. Well, we're, we know that's going on on my on my bookshelf. It's just happening. Mm -hmm. That's I'm funny. I follow Christina C. Jones only because I'm waiting for her to give me the backstory that I need. Oh, from the rose books. <laughs> yeah, I just <laughs> think it's wrong that she keeps bringing out all these different rose hoes, and I'm like, but the backstory, sis, I need it. <laughs> yeah. And I follow, yeah, I follow my favorite authors, which is like, there's a list of maybe like 20 to 25 authors that I love. And I just, if they come up with something, I am going to buy it or get it. And then I'll periodically like search their name on Amazon to see if they've come out with anything recently. If I don't have anything to read or I'm, I've like gone through my entire TBR, I'll just like put their name to the search bar on Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> on Google and just be like, Honestly, I like read most of my romances from my Kindle recommendations. Yes. Hmm. So, like I'll read a book and then I'll be done with the book and it'll be like, you know, want to check out these books? And then I'll go through those and then I'll read them. Typically, I don't read super popular romance. And I won't say super popular, but I mean, like as far as booktube is concerned, I don't always like if I'm really, really interested, like Dear Ava was super popular last year. I read it because people kept on raving about it and I did like it. But sometimes I won't lie there. There's like a good list of romance novels that booktube has sworn by. And I'm like, it was okay. Also, here's the thing that no one talks about. A lot of the romances that are super popular on booktube are actually more like chiclet, uh, chiclet and women's <laughs> fiction. They're not true romance books. Like I'll read the book and I'm just like, okay, this is definitely chiclet. When chiclet was really pop popping back in the early to mid 2000s. You want to go ahead and explain what that is for some people like me? <laughs> chiclet are like the Sophie Kinsella books that were really big. There were like a number of authors that wrote chiclet that were. Um, really popular in the early 2000s. Like I would say very late 90s to early 2000s to mid 2000s. There was this whole movement of writers who were writing about like young 20 to 20 something, late 20s, early 30 something women who were, you know, career and living on their own and like single and trying to living find single. Love and like living single. going out and like, Usually in the book, they would have like a couple bad relationships before they finally fell in love and then they got there happily ever after. And they would usually be like campy and have a lot of like comedic relief, but the comedic relief along the lines of like um, Bridget Jones's diary type of comedic relief, where it's a lot of mm. embarrassing the main heroine, where she's in these like embarrassing situations where you're like, sis, how? Um, the girls were very much like, I'm not like other girls. I wear my pajamas and footy, you know. <laughs> I never brush my hair and, you know, all this other shit. Meanwhile, the guys in the book are like, she's a goddess and beautiful. And the girls are like, I'm a nerd, you know, that kind of shit. So I feel so like- So basically we're mixing genres again. Well, Chicklet has rebranded because now you have all these authors coming out and they're like, oh, I wrote a romance novel. And I'm like, no, you wrote Chiclet. And it's been rebranded, um, but it's still Chiclet. But why do you think they got rid of Chiclet then? They didn't get rid of it, they just rebranded it, I think. So they rebranded it as romance. Yeah. They, they try to make it more, because um, romance has gotten super popular. Yes, yes it has. So they have rebranded it as like, even when I was searching I literally, y'all, January 1st or 2nd, I put into my Google search bar romance recommendations. Hmm. I mean, I see, a, I see a lot of, I don't even follow a lot of romance booktubers and romance floods a lot of my feed sometimes, which is crazy. 
Well, all of the responses I get, or um, what am I talking about? When I Googled it, a lot of the um, answers that I got were literally blog posts from popular bloggers, popular media outlets being like the top 25 romances you have to read in 2021, the top 10 that are coming out. And they were all quick lit being rebranded as romance. And I was like, this is not a traditional romance novel, but it's fine. If, if you watch anime, I consider chiclet like slice of life in book form. Facts. Mm -hmm. I can accept that. Yeah, like basically it's like the everyday time. life of a like of some woman and like literally how she lives that life and she just so happens to find love. It's not really always romance based because there may be like eight million things happening in her life that have nothing to do with this guy. Oh my gosh, Rachel, we were thinking the same thing. Would you consider Get a Life Chloe Brown to be considered romance or chiclet? Ooh, that's a good question. That, because by, by what you're describing, I'm like, it's I mean, it's, she it's got boned a couple of times. So like how many times you have to get boned <laughs> to be considered a romance? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> well, because a traditional romance novel is solely mostly focused on the couple. Like, you don't really get too much of a scope as to what is going on outside of this person falling in love because it's the romance novel is a single snapshot into this one season of this person's life where they're falling in love. And then, you know, you get the epilogue, which is like the happily ever after what happens afterwards, like into the future. So you don't get a lot of romances exploring like family life and, you know, your best friend and you do this on Tuesday, like you just don't, like they, you might get a few scenes here and there, but it's not the norm. The norm is the couple and focusing on them and what their, you know, their love story. That's a traditional romance novel. So when you start getting into like work antics and career issues, and this is happening with your friend group and this, it starts to veer more into chiclet territory into even women's fiction. Like for example, women's fiction would be considered the Virgin River books and the author who writes them, Robin Carr. That's what she writes. She writes the whole, you know, single woman in her 30s, starting over, she moves to this small town, this, this, and this happens. She falls in love with, you know, the little boy because in her third grade class and da 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 Like there's so much more going on. She meets the old man that runs the boot shop and he becomes her like her grandpa. Like she starts taking up hiking. Oh, and she falls one okay. of the hikers. Okay. okay, that's more like women's fiction, chick lit, not so much a traditional romance. So basically I read Chloe Brown. So I'm, I agree that Chloe Brown is romance because the majority of the story is focused on them two doing whatever they call themselves saying was romance. However, I just want to take a moment because Tati did did say this and I just wanted Tati to know it was not going to go into the chat unnoticed. <laughs> so 50 shades of romance tried head. Look, let me just say this. If you want to read 50 shades, please only read from the perspective of Christian Gray. You're welcome. Is that an option? Yes, she rewrote the series. She re she rewrote the first two books from Christian Gray's perspective. Those those are the only books that you need. Yeah, uh, Oshelay asked me to read it. You do not need because I read them for the first time last year. Towards the end of last year, I reread the Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy because it had been like years since I read them. And I had you know when you start watching the movies of stuff, it makes you want to read the books. Oh yeah. So I was re-watching the movies and I was like, I kind of want to reread the books. So I reread the books and I was like, wow, this is even worse than I <laughs> remembered. And then, <laughs> yes, I mean, I still enjoyed it, but I still was kind of like, oh wow. Um, but then I, I saw that, you know, I had never read it from Christian Gray's perspective, which she rewrote, you know, a couple years ago, maybe like two years ago now, two to three years ago. And so I finally picked them up and I was fascinated he is so much more of an interesting character than her so much more of an interesting character um neeks what did you just say which part oh this one 
Imagine going on the metro and an older woman is clear, clearly pleasuring herself while reading. What is happening? <laughs> do you live in New York? Here? This is how we don't get monetized. <laughs> Wait, where do you live? Because in New York, I saw stuff like that all the time. Ah, uh, what just happened? <laughs> oh man, hold on. I lost my train. I was I was pulling up comments and then we got here and I was like, wait. Oh my gosh. I love how like the chat is lit because of 50 shades. <laughs> well, like Tati always starts something in the chat. Tati always does. <laughs> The biggest takeaway I got from my reread of Fifty Shades is this is not a story about BDSM. This is actually a story about a guy who's really into BDSM for the wrong reasons because he never got therapy or enough therapy and a girl who desperately does not want to be into BDSM, but she falls in love with a guy who is into BDSM. So she's kind of trying to get him to stop doing BDSM. And so he tries to stop doing BDSM because she doesn't want to do BDSM. There you go. This is a great enough. Well, basically two people who were not romantically connected in any other way other than the fact that he was just like way too intense for her. Because I feel like being on the same level romantically means that you like the same things, but go off. Never mind. We're not going to talk about that level of toxic relationship. And you never think of that about book. It. I just think about in high school when I read it, my friend asked me to read it and I was just like, oh, okay. And then like, I'm not joking for like four years, whenever we would see each other, we would go butt plug. And she'd go, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for four years, I'm sure if I texted her right now, butt plug, she would probably start cracking up because <laughs> like, that's all we would ever say to each other. Like it's the only memory I have of that. But can we really talk about something interesting? Because this is only something that as an outsider, I find hilarious. Can we, can we talk about the conversations that are being had about romances where um because remember how like we make jokes for like i like to be choked or like snatch me up yes so there's also, like those are two comments that it was just for me and oh Brittany be so no we definitely said that on a live we, we did we yeah live, it became sorry. a t-shirt request yeah i know i know so i'm saying like oh said it in one live and then i said another one in a different one <laughs> you did. No, both of those are on my on the shirt list because they were I, I know. Shirt. I think Oshale said the, the choke one and I said snatch me up. It's <laughs> oh, I've also said the same thing. So I mean I'll take blame for it too. <laughs> but why is it that when these type of situations happen, like a good portion of book Twitter considers that aggressive and not okay, but then they're uplifting people like Christian Gray? <laughs> You know, there's a lot of uh, cognitive dissonance that goes on, I think, in the romance sphere and in the romance fandom. I think on book Twitter, you have a lot of people who are trying extremely hard to be politically correct and social justice warriors. And sometimes it gets in the way of common sense. Mm. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say on that because I can't even take book Twitter seriously sometimes when they get enraged about things that happen in romance novels. For example, let us discuss the situation in Bridgerton, shall we? Oh, oh yes. Bridgerton. Okay. I've been waiting for this. Our group chat has come to the podcast again. <laughs> let me just put the disclaimer out there. Let me just do this disclaimer. As a collective, we found Bridgerton to be very weak. Um, therefore, if you loved Bridgerton, you are not going to like this conversation. Uh, just mute us because we need the views. And <laughs> like, I'll tell you when to come back. Okay. <laughs> okay. So Bridgerton, I read the Bridgerton books a really long time ago, you know, as a young teen to 20 something, they were written mad long ago. Um, and so I decided to reread them with the adaptation. And everything I saw, everywhere I looked, was about the quote unquote rape scene, um, trigger warning, in you know, the first book, The Duke and I, and in obviously season one of Bridgerton, where you know, Daphne just takes advantage of Simon while he's inebriated and because she wants to have a baby, da 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 da. And I'm sitting here scratching my head as someone who's read the book, and I'm just like, wait, that's not how I recall that. I don't that's not, I don't think that's what, what happens. And so I finally finished my reread of the first book about two to three weeks ago. And 
I was completely right in my recollections. It was not a rape scene. I feel like there are a lot of gray areas in romance that people are not willing to acknowledge. And as long as there is consent and people are in a consensual relationship, a lot of things can happen within a relationship that people just want to put into a box so badly. And essentially what happens in that scene in Bridgerton is that Simon is completely inebriated um, after, books after are he great. and Daphne get into a fight. Sorry, this is a spoiler warning for those that have not read the books. But after he and um, Daphne and Simon get into a fight because Daphne essentially um, realizes what it takes to make a baby and that Simon is unwilling to, um, I don't know how to say this del delicately, but he's unwilling to deposit his semen inside of her, right? So she yeah. doesn't want to, that's the only way I can think to say it. Because he doesn't want to have a kid and she didn't realize that that's how you had to have a kid, but she finally connects the dots. So she gets angry with him because this whole time she thought that there was something medically wrong with him and that's why he couldn't have a child. So they get into a huge argument. He goes out, gets drunk, comes home and realizes that she has moved out of their room into another room, starts banging on the door drunkenly. She's like, yo, calm down, my dude. Like, I don't want to talk to you right now. I'm not opening the door. I don't want to have sex with you right now. Like, no. She, but he is so loud and drunken that she ends up coming out takes him to his room, undresses him, and he falls on top of her. He's passed out. She goes to sleep in the bed next to him. She wakes up and he's like feeling on her and everything because he's half asleep. They have sex and he cannot pull out because he's drunk. And there you go. <laughs> and I was just like, where? But that's the book version, right? That's the book version. That's yeah, so Shonda Rhimes made it all messed up in the movie. In the in the yeah, because in the movie he definitely says Daphne, Daphne, yeah, Daphne, he like definitely stop. tells her to stop, and she doesn't listen. It's okay. like cringy. Well, that's yeah. different. I can't because I was like, how do you not even know how to make a baby, but you are not listening to his consent warning? Like what? I can't speak to the adaptation. I was talking about people who were saying that about the book. Oh yeah, no. Like in the from the book, I'm like, no, that doesn't make sense. But the the way that Shonda did it in the show, and yes, I'm specifically calling out Shonda because Shonda has a tendency to mess up black people in shows. Um, mm -hmm. But the way that she did it, it was really like, so we just gonna she just gonna rape her husband. Bet all right. Uh, oh, that really happened. Yeah, like he's adamantly telling her to stop, and she refuses to stop. Look, I haven't made it that far in the adaptations. After episode four, I just lost interest and I don't know if I'll ever finish it. Um, I literally skipped just to that part so that I could talk about it with y'all. I did not know she did that. Yeah, I was just like, okay, so here's my thing, first of all. I'm actually just genuinely mad at Shonda for taking the Bridgerton books um, and making this show instead of making her own show. She's proven that she has the capability and the creativity to come up with stuff where we are not just thrown into someone else, to a white person's story, especially a white author who has specifically said, we have no place in her stories. So why Shonda boosting this, this racist lady sales by making this book into a series where people who have no idea about the author are now buying the books? And now raising her but her money. This woman is racist, says we have no place in her stories. Why are you give, why are you buying the rights to make her story with black people? We deserve better stories than this. And the same way she did it again, took the really pretty black girl and made her a mistress, made the guy have all types of made the black guy have all types of daddy issues. How do we have all of this? And it's supposed to be groundbreaking, and we still have the same stereotype, Shonda. Ooh. Speak on it. Like, I just really want to know. Like, Shonda, you literally have shown us you can give us shows. Granted, every time you give us shows, the black people get screwed over some kind of way, but you clearly have the creativity. So, why are you buying? Like, you had to buy the rights to make this story. You left Disney to make the story of a racist white woman come to life on screen. Wow, that's a punch. Like, all I know is that Shonda Rhimes is about her money. Yeah, and it's still out when need be. She is not trying to have 
you know, the burden on her of having positive representation of black people. I mean, that has been made clear since Grey's, Grey Anatom Grey's Anatomy. Oh, yes. Right? Like she does not care. And it's very clear. Like when it comes to people like Shonda Rhimes, Tyler Perry, Ooh, not that dude that keeps making the same show over Kenya. and over and over again with light skinned people. What's, the, what's his name? Kenya, Kenya Barris. Kenya Barris. Like there's like a select group that when it comes to being able to positively represent, you know, black people as a whole, as a community, I don't look to them because I know they're not going to do it. I know they're yeah. not. It's like you get like the opposite heads of of the of the what is it like opposite opposite like versions. It's like you could watch Tyler Perry and you'll see a whole bunch of ism, like mm -hmm. just, like to the point where you're just like really. And then if you watch like Kenya or Shonda, you're just like, I don't want to call you the C O asterisk N, but that's <laughs> kind of what you sound like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you said Astrid. I was just going to say the word, but since you're saying Astrid, I will refrain. I'm just saying that if if you are going to give me fantastic, beautiful Black people walking around in error clothing, the dream of a show that I have always wanted my entire life, how dare the first one be the story from a racist white woman? <laughs> Like, do you know how long I have been waiting for us to be walking around in Victorian era clothes, looking stunning, yeah. stunning on these hoes with the melanin glowing as our tightly corseted bosoms are sticking out saying, what's up? And this is what we get. I was like, shot death. Shot death. <laughs> I wasn't shocked at all. I was actually surprised to see that there were even any main characters that were black women. She is fine putting black men in prominent um, goals. Um, but she's not very good at putting black women in prominent roles. And if they are in prominent roles, they're yeah, heavily stereotyped, i.e. the mammy, the Jezebel, et cetera. Um, and yeah, she was true to form. We had the mammy stereotypes. We had the Jezebel stereotype, um, in, you know, full out in Bridgerton. I was not surprised whatsoever. I was like, oh, here we are. Not shocked. I'm just... I just want more. It's like, like you remember when we were talking about, we were talking about Jingle Jangle and how like the fashion on Jingle Jangle was everything life could have given me. Mm -hmm. Jingle Jangle was also an original story and therefore I appreciate it. Shout out to Fam U for being the people that were the creative minds behind creating Jingle Jangle. But we don't get that with Shonda. Like with Shonda, it literally feels like here's a story about white people, but we're gonna trickle in some color because now it's diverse. Well, Shonda gives the diversity that the main public is comfortable with. They're yes. comfortable with seeing black people in stereotypes. They're comfortable with seeing um, black men in leading roles and black women being subjugated on screen. That's what they're comfortable with, okay? Anything else, anything truly groundbreaking, anything that's really gonna be individual and unique, they, they're not gonna be comfortable with that. That is a good point. Um. Oh, Bailey. I think Bailey is like the only character on Grey's that's not. You know what? I'm not gonna do that. Nope. And yet, <laughs> Grey's Anatomy is husband. a whole other conversation. Right. And yet, Bailey's husband took yeah. her to hell and back, didn't he? Okay, I was just about to say. I was like, you know why Bailey's character is so stand up? Because her husband is so trash. She has no choice but to be decent. That's all like, I'm gonna say on that. Yeah. I'm I'm still not happy how she did that either. <laughs> Except we have questions about it. <laughs> Does Bailey ever get married again? I'm just in the part where she broke up with the nurse and I was mad. Look, I stopped watching Grey's Anatomy a long time ago. Yeah, I she I, she I, has I, a um husband now. His name's uh Ben. Okay, can we safely say that we're done with the Bridgerton conversation or would anybody in the comments like to say anything else about Bridgerton? Because otherwise, I'm gonna take the disclaimer off. Because I know Tati muted herself. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering why I didn't see our moderator. Yeah, what? she <laughs> muted herself because she hasn't watched Bridgerton yet. Um, I don't know. I I was trying to think. I was like, what is a kind of romance that would get me a non-romance reader wanting to read? And that would have been what I would have read. Except it's not our story. Um. Because maybe, maybe 
in this current time that we're in, um, we will stop. Like, I don't, to be clear, I love reimagining and retellings. Those are some of my favorite things to read. I just want us to create our own stories and I want us to keep being speculative about it. And I want us in every time frame. And I want us being amazing. And I want us to have romances where it's two Black people, no matter what publishing says, is something to stomach. And I want us also portrayed that way on television and not associated with drug dealing or quote unquote being in the hood or living the struggle bus life. I would really like Black love to be presented on TV the way that all of the more comfortable quote unquote relationships are portrayed on television and books. That's all. Love portraying black love on television. Okay, I'm yeah. taking off this banner. Um, oh, <laughs> y'all know what came out recently, right? What? No. On Netflix. On Malcolm Netflix. and Marie. Oh. Oh, I haven't watched it yet. I haven't watched it either. I'm like waiting. I might watch it uh, this weekend. I've been seeing a lot of mixed reviews about it. Yeah. And you know, I stand Zendaya, so I'm really hesitant to watch it. I don't know. I don't know. Something about it. I don't even know. Like, it's one of those things that I keep watching the preview and I'm just. It's like, I don't want to be disappointed. <laughs> I think I'm going to watch it and feel that it would probably have been better as a play. Oh. But I'm open. I'm open. Yeah. I'm just... One... I don't, yeah. I'm not ready to watch it yet. Plus, he's fine. Mm. Yes, he is. He is very attractive. But I love how everybody is like, we need more Black romance. <laughs> We do, we really do. And I don't know what it's going to take. I mean, I have high hopes for, you know, people coming up now, like Shonda's been around for, for a while, but we have Issa Rae coming up. I'm very hopeful about her and the things that she's doing. Um, it's, I don't know, like I can't, it's almost like you can depend on like Shonda's generation, right? Cause they're gonna keep doing what they've always been doing. So it's like, you have to support the people that are coming up that are at least attempting to make black stories and to make them. Yeah, because that's why Insecure, that's why I am happy and sad that Insecure is ending after this season. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, this is their last season. And I, I understand what Issa is doing. It's ending on a good note. Mm. But like Insecure, when we like, you remember that first episode, how freaking relatable that episode was yep. to just our time? <sighs> Issa going to work with all them passive aggressive white people. Listen, I want more. Ooh, and obviously y'all know I'm on this one. I want all of that. I want, I want black stories. I will even, I will even accept black romances as long as they are original. And as long as they are not written so that they would be palatable to an audience that doesn't even realize they're asking for palatability is racist. Um, I want us to have our stories. I want us to be the ones to write our stories. Cause you remember on Twitter that one uh, quote unquote author who tried to say the reason that she wrote a black romance was because black romance wasn't being written about in romance. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, I think that was like a couple weeks ago where she, her excuse for basically trying to trick everybody into thinking that she was a black woman writing the story was that like she, when her, when it was revealed that she was a white woman, she was like, well, I did this because there's not a lot of stories out there like this. And I was like, actually, there are a lot. They just don't get the same publishing thing deal that you get. Yep. It's just, uh, that's what I want. I want us to keep calling them out. And oh my God, yes, Chelsea did drag the heck out of that girl. Like that was a fantastic thing to read on Twitter that day. Oh, and yeah, I don't want no more slave stories. <laughs> no more. I don't, want, I don't want it in romance. 
I don't want it in fantasy. I don't want it in historical fiction. We get it. We're tired. Unless you're writing a slave story where we get to beat the living snot out of the plantation owner and his family. Unless you're Django-ing it, I don't want it. I don't want to see the slave owner um, get to quote unquote fall in love with the slave that he's raping. I don't want any more slave stories, period. Just just needed to get that ooh, out. Ooh, oh, and and no, no, no stories around the time of Jim Crow with a black woman and a white man who's like a soldier in the Confederacy. <laughs> that <laughs> I'm tired of that narrative too, because <laughs> let's just be honest. He, if he was a Caucasian male falling in love with a black woman, he was not in the Confederate army. <laughs> like, the, the, the whole premise of the Confederate army was because they wanted to keep the black people enslaved. You cannot romanticize this. They are literally the predecessors to the KKK and the police. We are not fetishizing this crap anymore. Period. Just, oh, uh, I don't know what I saw. I saw something on Twitter the other day. Was it? I, I don't know. I was actually I was scrolling on Instagram, and I saw a cover where it was something you could clearly see that it was Civil War times, and it was a white guy and a black woman on the cover, and I was just like, no. <laughs> I was like, you know why we need Black history and we need real history taught in class so people can know that the Confederacy was the beginning of the KKK. <laughs> So they can stop trying to romanticize it. I just, I'm tired. Like we literally get a couple stories and the only stories that get pushed are the stories where we're like, just beneath, I guess is the best way to put it. Because um, I will reference Miss WOC Reader did a blog post specifically talking about why she, um, about black trauma and why it's actually still okay to read black trauma. And I actually agree with her to the point where it's like, I don't mind reading black trauma um, as long as it's not the, the freaking, what's the word I want to put it? As long as it's not like thug. Oh no, Oshley's internet just went down. So it's me and you, Troy. Uh -huh. Oshley. <laughs> it's Mercury <laughs> retrograde. So I mean. Again, I always say this. It's not our podcast unless one of us drops out. <laughs> or one of us accidentally mutes. Yep, that's true. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> or accidentally hits the camera button. Oh, yes. Thank God I did not do that this time because I look ratch. <laughs> I have a piece of tape over my um, camera. So even if it does, you won't see anything. Okay. 40 Acres by Dwayne Alexander Smith is a reverse slavery thriller situation. Huh. So does that mean it's like Django? Because again, unless I'm beating the snot out of them. Best part of that whole movie. Yeah. You know what me and my dad do? Whenever me and my dad call someone the C word, instead of saying the C word, we go. <laughs> we'll be like, who's that N word on that neck? <laughs> <laughs> that is not what I was expecting. <laughs> I swear, that's always what me and him say like lose our minds huh. okay i just want to ask the audience um what are some romance books that you've read especially if you're participating in the black author readathon um what books have you read i'm just curious oh yeah um wait what book twitter really tried to get me to read that Alyssa Cole series of interracial romances set during the Civil War times. <laughs> no, it's okay to tell please, book please, Twitter please, no please. sometimes. Like Alyssa Cole has a good range of books that you don't, you can literally just skip that whole section and you'll be fine. <laughs> right. Those books are very popular. You know why they're popular? Why? I'm going to say this and it's going to hurt people's feelings. Because it's interracial romance hidden under the hashtag of black love because it's written by a black author. Woo! Whoa! Well, I'm signing off. <laughs> <laughs> What's that meme with SpongeBob? I'm going to log out. Right? <laughs> I'm out. I mean, it's true, though. It's like book Twitter, for some reason, is so obsessed with... Um, 
with interracial romance, but for some reason they will not identify it as interracial romance. And I'm always like, it's to the point now where I really want to ask book Twitter, like, is interracial romance a bad word for y'all or something? Because like, it's a whole genre. <laughs> I think for me, the only reason that it, it, for me, I feel like it's not okay is because there are authors out there, black authors who have dedicated their lives to writing black romance because they do want positive representations of black love that are not toxic um, or filled with stereotypes. And that is their mission. And so they get overlooked when you only focus on interracial romance and you call that black romance. Like they, they get lost in the shuffle and then their books are not recognized and they're not getting the spotlight that they deserve. Yeah, because I kind of feel like it's it's just mind boggling to me because I'm like, really though, why is book why is booktube and book Twitter so obsessed with like erasing the term interracial romance? It deserves its own section, but like anytime you go look at a black romance or a black love romance list, it's majority interracial romance stories. And I'm always just like I mean, I'm even quote Christina, Christina C. Jones because you know we follow her. Stop that! <laughs> <laughs> if y'all haven't noticed, she definitely did like a little thing, and Love Belvin being the queen that she is uh, reposted it, but it was just like, dang, like the Black Love hashtag is a little interracial. <laughs> Like, I don't know if we need to shorten it because, you know, book Twitter likes a good catchy phrase. I don't know, but it deserves its own freaking hashtag. It's just like, stop it. Stop it. I think also the problem is that there aren't a lot of mainstream published books that are black romance. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the black romances are being written by authors who are independent authors. And I think for people who aren't willing to look or they're just looking on those big publishing recommendation lists, a lot of the big pub publishers are not pub behind those authors. They're usually independent. Yeah, I do notice that they're, they are a lot more independent. And it's like, to be clear, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with interracial romance. I just don't understand why it doesn't get its own hashtag. It's just, it's always under the black love hashtag. And I'm just like, it's not, that's, they're, they're doing their own love thing here. Um, why are we, no. Um, ooh, interesting point. I think it's equal to how a black woman like Rihanna and Normani are pop stars, but since they're black women, they get labeled as R&B. And then Justin Bieber made a whole R&B album. But since he's white, it was labeled as pop. I remember that. Yep. Maybe. Maybe that's what it is. But I then also like, think that's us letting publishing, that's letting, that's us letting publishing change things that they don't get to change. I honestly think that it's because America is obsessed with the one drop rule. Wow. I'm I'm dead serious. So it's kind of like <laughs> it's like, oh well, one partner is black, so it's black, it's black romance. When black romance authors have specifically coined the term black romance for romances with between black people. So it's like, well, why don't you just go with the different definition of the people who are actually writing it and have coined it as their term? Um, as opposed to you one dropping it and being like, well, there's one black person or in the couple, you know, half of the couple is black. So it's black love. And it's like, mm. it's like that's well, not the what couple, that's that half the couple is probably white, too. But why are we dismissing that? that, too, that too. <laughs> it's like, dang, bro. Oh, my God. It's color on the cover. Black love. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, that's not what the authors say. And even like the authors who write interracial romance say they write interracial romance they don't say they that's write what black I'm, I'm like even the yeah. authors themselves are like i write interracial romance and then it's like here are all the black love that you should read it's like sh the author literally said that they write interracial romance like publishing really be like oh mm, black love looks a little too black <laughs> let's mm, 
And listen, I think I've said this in a live before, but it's even more relevant now. A lot of people these days are saying they read Christina C. Jones. I'm just like, okay, that's, I'm not saying that you don't. But if you're actually reading Christina C. Jones, especially on a Kindle, after you read that book, your Kindle will then tell you, hey, do you want to read something else like yeah, that? Yeah, because I read one and I'm still getting recommended. <laughs> So it really shouldn't be that difficult to find two Black people in a romance, especially if, as you say, you've been reading Christina C. Jones, because I read her all the time. And let me tell you something. I could read Christina C. Jones, Love Belvin, back to back to back. And then if I read one non-Black romance, I'm going to get a whole bunch of recommendations for that. So the minute you read something, Kindle Unlimited or Kindle Unlimited, Kindle, Nook, whatever, will show you more. They will. Facts. Also, I'm loving the chat right now because we just made some very important distinctions here. Black love is love between two or more Black people. Mm -hmm. Black romance, I consider that a romance written by, or I'm, I consider Black romance a story involving Black people still. It is because that's what the author said. Like y'all gotta like, go with what the authors are saying. Yeah, I was like, I'm really in a place where like I have been watching some of these authors like talk about their books and they put their books in a category that like everyone else is putting it in another category. And it's just like, hey. So like the author said no. Because there are also black authors, y'all, that only write white characters. Yeah. Yes. In a romance. So are we going to call that black romance too? That doesn't make any sense. No, I'm going to consider it a black author writing romance. Exactly. Because, yep. for example, Brittany Cherry, for those that are familiar with her work, Brittany Cherry is a black woman who only writes white characters. White or, uh, from what I've seen, white. I don't know if she writes any other races besides white, but from the books I've read, the three or four books I've read by her, all of her characters have been white. So you can't, so she's a black woman, but you can't call that black romance. Like that just doesn't make sense. She's a black author who writes romance. Right. Because exactly. unfortunately, white romance does not need the distinction of white romance because it's considered the regular romance. Right. They're considered the standard, which, I mean, there's a whole, there's a whole discussion behind that. But <laughs> that's, that's, that's literally, y'all, they're considered oh, the standard. Tati. That's literally why black authors who write romance between black characters had to start using the hashtag black romance because they were trying to tell you, hey, there's all this white romance out there that's considered the standard. We're writing black romance. You can find us using this hashtag. And when you click on it, you're going to find stories where black people are falling in love. Yeah, I think it's just been very interesting to watch because, again, I don't know if I paid it like I just I don't know. I'm just more cognizant of these type of things this year. So I have been clicking on the hashtags and seeing what the hashtags have. And the hashtags are being flooded with the wrong things. And I'm just like, maybe it's because we have given an interpretation and no and there has not been a definitive. This is what it is. And the only people that are defining it are the authors themselves. And it's like, no one is listening to them. Like, okay. No and Steph, it's just, corrected. Uh, Steph corrected me. Brittany Cherry has interracial books too. I have also, every her. time you say Brittany Cherry, I like listen and I'm like, she sounds like a stripper. Stop. Like, <laughs> that would be my stripper name. Just so everybody knows. <laughs> she hasn't, I haven't gotten to her inter interracial books because her books are very emotional. So I literally can only read like one a year. <laughs> did you say one a year yes it's too much oh. like i'm emotionally distraught distraught by the time i'm done i'm like i'm just like torn up like crying like i just can't so one. Dang. A year. <laughs> i mean but that actually sounds like that sounds like a good book in my opinion one that gets your emotions up that high that's kind of how i feel about tiffany d jackson i feel like i need to take a tylenol after reading her book <laughs> <laughs> like your head be hurting because you're crying. Sometimes. My head be hurting. Sometimes I'll be snotting. It all yep. depends on what happens. I mean, that's a sign of an excellent writer and they can, you know, pull those emotions out of you. But yeah, I cannot read 
uh, her books back to back to back like that. So I haven't read all of her books. So I'll have to check out. But I one. also think that we should note that like, just because a black author does not write black romance or black love does not mean that they're not a good writer. It just means that they write in a different category. Yes. And just because they're a black author, it just because they are a black author, it doesn't mean all of their books belong under that hashtag. I mean, I feel very strongly about that as a writer. Like, I'm sorry. Like, if and a Do you reader, have to apologize, we don't apologize as a writer and a reader. Because if I click on the black romance hashtag, I'm sorry, I want to see black romance. Period. I don't care who's writing it. I don't care if an Asian man is writing it. That's what I want to see. I want to see stories about black people falling in love. That is the point of that hashtag. Do not get me started on the people screwing up Reese so lit. And, and if I click on, oh no. Oh no, we're not. We're not doing that. Not today. <laughs> that was if I on a tirade. interracial because there's like interracial, and then on on Amazon they literally have W M B W, which is white man, black woman. That's how they have it categorized now. Yes, I mean this. It's been like this forever. This has oh. been categorized for a long time. They'll have W M uh, B W, or they'll have. Well, they usually don't have. It's usually white man, black woman. They, it's very rare that it's black man, white woman. Very rare. Um, but that's the most popular one. Sometimes they'll have Asian. So they'll have A-M-B-W. Um, Asian man, black woman. That's how they categorize it for a reason. And then they also have, you know, just the general interracial romance category, um, which has, you know, lots of choices. But yes, yeah, that's how I grew up reading you know the categories that's how I grew up recognizing them in romance so that's why I feel like this new mixture of everything getting all confused this is recent and I don't understand why yeah I'm just like listen you are allowed to write whatever you write but you don't get and this is my favorite part of it you don't get to fake the funk <laughs> either in it or you not <laughs> play play period <laughs> Oh my gosh. Just like stand in what you do. Like huh? stand in what you write and let it be that. Let it be what it right. is. Right. And don't let people smush you into a category where you don't belong. Like stand up for your stuff. Oh wait, I skipped one. Sorry. I'm 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 posting the comments because I'm really enjoying just the interaction between everybody. <laughs> Um, see, I only have 15 minutes on, well, this week I only have five minutes. When I'm in charge of the Black Crows posting for the week, then I have 15 minutes, so. Hilarious. I I'm mean, in charge of the posting this week, so it's going to be very uh, dry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with that also being said, we just want to remind you guys of a couple of things. Don't forget this weekend, we have another Black Book Summit panel. If you missed the first one, I highly suggest you go back and check it out. It was really fun. So I think fun. everybody did such a good job. Um, it just kind of gave us like a whole lot of energy for the next panel. So the next panel is Reading for Views versus Pleasure. And we have five fantastic people joining us for that particular panel. I'm so so it happens the same time as last week, 2 p.m. Eastern. I don't remember all of the variations of the time zones. Just please Google that. You can set notifications for it right now if you want to. Um, I promise you, you will enjoy this one too because the people that are going to be gracing us, like in my mind, we have a celebrity on the panel, but I'm trying to be normal. Um, the next thing that we have on our fantastic lineup for this month is just to remind everybody that we are reading Escaping Exodus by Nikki Drayden. And we are going to be talking about that book on the 21st of February at 6.30 p.m. Um, so if you definitely want to join us in a book discussion because yes, we are a book club still at the, at the very root of us, we are a book club. <laughs> yes. Come yeah. join us then. Um, we also have a special Valentine's day um, 
Galentine's Day type of vibe on Valentine's Day on Sunday, February 4th at or 14th, 14th. at 7 p.m. So if you don't have anything else to do, come grab your wine, your PJs, um, come chill with us. We're still trying to decide. Like, I almost wanted to make it a Zoom. Can we make but, it a Zoom and just watch a movie? Yeah, I'm really thinking that we might end up making the Valentine's Day thing instead of a podcast. We might just make it a Zoom and watch movies. I just watched a movie that I really need to talk to them about uh, on Netflix. It was always a bridesmaid. That True. movie pissed me off. It pissed me off on a whole different realm. But like I was enraged by the time I was done. So I was like, me well, too. that was good. Me too. <laughs> But yes, you can go like on our channel right now. You can set notifications to everything that is happening in the month of February. Um, <laughs> are you asking us who would be your monster bay? Because that's hilarious. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh my God. We will. We accept. Thank you. <laughs> like, yes, we totally accept. We like making our monsters visible. <laughs> That always sounds so wrong. I it know. Sounds so wrong. I like to say it because, I mean, we wear our monster smut things around. So it, it was a very, all I'm going to say is if you're going to watch that movie, watch it with your girlfriend so all of y'all can be mad together. I was pissed and I was by myself. I was with my, I was on with my girlfriends on FaceTime and we were like yelling at the screen like, you idiot. <laughs> Oh, we have to, we Nollywood, have to Bollywood it. comes out on Valentine's Day. Look, wait, what does? Okay, so there was a it's a commercial, but it was on Netflix where it was a Nigerian woman and an Indian man like got together and they had to deal with their families. That sounds stressful as an actual Nigerian. I know, woman. but I don't know if I want to. <laughs> <say that. laughs> I, don't I don't know. I'm not ready. It's called moment. Namaste Wahala. Oh no. Ocean <laughs> is like too close to home, too close to home. Yeah. <laughs> That's too relatable. I feel like it would just make my blood pressure rise. <laughs> <laughs> but if we do end up doing a Zoom and watching a movie, then we'll put a poll up um, on our Instagram of which movie we should watch and we'll try to think of some options. I want to do like something old school from like the 2000s. Man, listen. We've been watching a lot of the two th the early night or the nineties two thousand movies. Some of them are triggering, like very, very triggering. It's like, oh no! <laughs> like I remember rewatching Waiting to Exhale recently, and I was just like, wow, this I watched, so much differently as an adult. What was the name of that movie? Um, it was one of Martin Lawrence's movies. Uh oh, where he bets his friend that he can get this rich girl. And then, like, he gets her and then, like, kind of dumps her and she goes all crazy on him. What? Oh, there's a thin line between love and hate. Oh, I've heard of that movie. I don't think I actually ever watched that one. Listen, as an adult, these movies hit different. Yeah, they always do. Like, um, what was the other ones I watched recently? The Brothers. <sighs> the Brothers. I had way less sympathy for The Brothers as an adult woman. <laughs> like, look. <laughs> like, as a teen, I was like, oh. As I mean, as a team, wow. we also thought Tyrese was fine. So, like, Ooh, you mean Cry Reese? Oh, <laughs> Cry Reese. For me. Not Cry Reese. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since he made that video saying, What more do you want from me in that tone? <laughs> crying. I can't see him any different. I'm sorry. No, I was not prepared. <laughs> That's Not what Lovely T calls him. Lovely T calls him Cry Reese, and I just adopted that. Oh, man. No, I mean, I'm totally down with this. Um, I'll have to go get some good wine. Stella Rose is juice. I need some <laughs> good wine. <laughs> it is juice. It is. Amazing. And it gives you a headache as if you drank something really intense. It does. It's, it's really cheap and annoying. It doesn't. It doesn't seem right. It doesn't hit. I'm like, how dare you give me a headache like I drank real wine? <laughs> <laughs> so to close out this podcast on romance, does anyone have any romances, romance recommendations? I'm always looking for some Ooh, recommendations. Dark horse wine. I'm going to check that out. <laughs> Ooh. Y'all, we some winos. Don't be telling us nothing. Look. Listen, I just... <laughs> 
listen, go ahead and tweet me or send me a message. Cause listen, I want a whole wine cabin. Like I want a wine fridge of its own. It needs to have its own space and its own electricity. That sounds nice. That's basically where I'm at right now. That's very luxe. Yeah. I believe in, I believe women deserve luxury. I'm one of those people. So I might not spend it on a bag, but I will spend it on a good wine cabinet. Mm -hmm. I have a romance recommendation. Of course you do. What is it? So this is by a Black author who writes interracial romance. Okay. And her name is, she also writes like white character. Anyway, her name is J.J. McAvoy. McAvoy? McAvoy. And she has this one series that gives me all of like the Harry and... um. What's her face? Megan vibes. What's her face? I couldn't remember her name for a moment. I felt bad. Um, it's a series. I think the third book comes out soon, but it's called The Prince's Bride is the first book. And it's about this white prince in some random ass, small ass country. And <laughs> <laughs> that's like obviously fictitious. And he falls in love with this black woman. And it just gave me everything I needed <laughs> that Harry and Meghan are no longer giving me because they quit the royal family. But I was like, this is it. But um, The Prince's Bride is the first book. And then the, um, the second book, I'm trying to remember what it's called. I'm trying to look it up real quick because I can never remember the titles of things. And then I think the third book comes out like very, very soon if it's not out already. Hold on. Is it just ahead. a trilogy or is this one that's got a couple more books in the lineup while you're looking for the title? I think the last book is, is it's a trilogy. So we have the, the Prince's Bride part one. Okay. And then the Prince's Bride part two. And then the third book. And from what I'm thinking, the final one is called the Prince's Bride beginning forever. And it's after like, they've gotten married and he's been crowned king it's not a spoiler um and she's queen and she's been they've been hell and back because the, of obviously the country is kind of racist of course and she's a black queen and the third book comes out february 12th y'all so it's coming out next oh it's in a couple of days oh in a couple of days february 12th yeah. on friday oh shoot let me pre-order. But anyway, <laughs> so yeah, so that's my recommendation for interracial romance. For black romance, um, Christina C. Jones just came out with a new book that I'm really excited about that I'm actually saving for this weekend. Ooh. And this is how I know her notoriety and her fandom is growing because the book went number one the day it came out, which is really exciting. And I'm very happy for her. As she should, because of the romances that I've read, you know, the four, I love her the four. <laughs> she just I mean I don't know how she does it like I literally That's don't enough. know how she does it but the book that she just came out with is called Maybe, Me Maybe Next Time and it's the first book in the Vegas Nights book and I also love that she creates like whole worlds for her characters and the male model on the cover of this book is look, delicious look delicious look. That is the proper <laughs> term to use for him. Delicious. I'm delicious. I want to send her a DM and be like, do you know this man personally? Or I've always wanted to know. I'm like, <laughs> did you just find people on the street and be like, you'd be cute enough for my romance cover? Because I was like, where did you find him? Is he real? Like, I want to be like, is this a stock photo, sis? Or is this a family friend? <laughs> is this family friend single? <laughs> What's the title? Or say the two titles of the books again. Okay, so the interracial romance is called The Prince's Bride Part 1 and 2 by J.J. Mc McAvoy. It's like M-C-A-V-O-Y. McAvoy. McAvoy, McAvoy. I'm not sure how she says her name. But yeah, it's J.J. M-C-A-V-O-Y. I'm so sorry. Maybe somebody can write it in the chat because I don't have access to it right now. Um. The Princess, the Prince's Bride, not the Princess Bride, but the Prince's Bride, part one and part two, and part three comes out on Friday by J.J. McAvoy, M-C-A-V-O-Y. So that's my interracial romance recommendation. And then my Black romance recommendation is Christina C. Jones's latest book, Maybe Next Time. 
and it's cute it's short i think it's more of a novella length so you don't have to make like a huge commitment if you've never read christina c jones before you can kind of get like a small cute little taste before you dive in and then my regular romance recommendation i'm trying to think because i've been reading so much romance is my regular romance recommendation is a regency period book which wow. is different from is it regency no it's georgian is it georgian victorian i can't remember which period i don't think it's victorian it may be regency or georgian period i can't remember long story short it's called my last duchess by eloisa james and it just I gave me everything it gave how do you spell did you say eloisa eloisa james E-L-O-I-S-A, James. I love her books. Her books just take me to another world. Like, they just give me everything that I want and that I need. And this book was so cute because it was literally about a woman who's a widow, Ophelia, and her husband just died and left her with her two-year-old daughter who she's obsessed with. She's, like, obsessed with her daughter. And then the male, um, the hero is a duke. And he has eight children, eight children, and he's already been married twice. His first wife died, and then his second wife ran away with another dude, so he had to get a divorce, which was, like, <laughs> unheard of. So he's now he's looking for a new duchess, and he's also looking, like, for someone who can be a mom to all eight of his kids. And what? it's, like, they- eight. eight? Eight. And it's, like, they meet each other, and she's, like, yo, my dude, I'm not about to be a mom to eight kids you've already had two wives like you need to calm the fuck down <laughs> and he's like no please marry me it's so cute so cute highly recommend i will say i'll jump on that bandwagon because she also has one called wild and love i love oh okay troy you're gonna love this so wild and love is about the wilds right mm -hmm. my last duchess the one i'm recommending right now is about their dad <gasps> really this is the prequel you oh my god no oh. way Y'all are so aggy. <laughs> <laughs> this is of cool. course, you, of course, y'all would do this. Of you course, know the wild siblings. There's like eight or nine of them. So this is the story about the dad and like how he met his wife and like how she took on all eight kids. Yo, that makes so much sense because I have wild in love and I have say no to the duke. Oh my god, me too. I'm reading wild in love right now. I love wild. Eight oh kids god, is so a no good. for me. I'm that's kind of low for them. Eight kids. Let's Jesus. just say that he was really hitting his mark each time. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Ma'am. Time out. <laughs> time. Time out. I was not ready. <laughs> oh <my God. sighs> okay. All right. Um, <laughs> we've been on here for an hour and 30 minutes and obviously Oshley is hitting a delusional spot. <laughs> right. <laughs> because, listen, this is my thought. You better be a, I'll He's be a sugar good. mama as long as I get some, you know, extra sugar. He's a rich Duke. He can afford it. Dang. Would you get with a rich guy if he had eight kids? Absolutely not. <laughs> no. Are they old? Well, his oldest is 18. No, I'm asking Brittany. Um, um, like in this scenario, are the kids old? Um, well, they're eight kids. They range between like the age of 21 and like seven or something. I don't no. know what the proper age difference is for eight kids. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm just, just I'm just saying, like the mom, I don't have to be a mom to them. Okay. Just think of the ages of the Von Trapp children. That should be an adequate age distinction, right? <laughs> Here's I don't the thing. If their moms were still in the picture, that would actually make me not want to do it more. Because I wouldn't want to overstep and there's just a lot of, there's like a lot of politics involved there. So basically... If Talking they were like, said get with like screw or relationship because that's two different answers. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> <Touché>. <laughs> Whoa. I love y'all. All of y'all be out of pocket so quick. <laughs> but Tati is right though. Like I wouldn't be in a relationship with him, but he could be also, on my roster. 
here's the thing. What if you want kids too? Wouldn't you feel crazy adding to that number? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. But no, but you have to put out one because then all that money is going to go to them and you get none. <laughs> That's so true. Look at Troy. Troy. You got to a will? I can't. <laughs> They're even thinking. You got to have at least, you know, get some of the will. That sounds like, I mean, I'm with stuff on this. Like, I don't want to deal with your baby mama drama, but like, if I call you, come through. I don't need all that extra stuff. <laughs> I mean, he would really have to be a, an amazing dude to put. Even up then, the answer is no. Eight <laughs> children? <laughs> you really don't have time to do anything. And in this day and age, that's a very good question. How many baby mamas? <laughs> <laughs> like future eight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so mad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to this day, I wonder why women are still dating him. I'm like, how? Listen, how? shout out to Lori Harvey again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how she managed to escape that, but it seems yeah, like she... anytime you get close enough to future, you pregnant. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't. I that other rapper, I can't remember his name, but I'm like, why y'all got so many kids? Y'all rich enough to get a vasectomy. What is this? Are you talking about the one-eyed one? <laughs> what? <laughs> we need to end this live. <laughs> it is time to end. <laughs> Are you talking about Fanny Wall? <laughs> well, I mean, he only has one eye. Oh, my God. <laughs> you couldn't think of any way to do that. <laughs> I can't remember his name. Uh, I'm sorry. I mean, Betty but Wop. Betty Wop is definitely the person you're referring to. I just wasn't ready for how you referred to him. <laughs> sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, just grew abs. <laughs> oh, man. That that brought tears to my eyes. Ooh. Oh, Lord. Well, on that note. <laughs> right. <laughs> huh. We're going to go. True. We're gonna leave, guys. We're we're getting to that point now of no return. Let us. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys on Saturday. Oh my God, he has ten. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> he does. I forgot. He does have a million kids. That's why. He, that's why he can barely stay solvent. Like all his money goes to them. <laughs> Jesus. That's a lot. I can't with this, this, this whole the, chat. This is the weakest pullout game list of ever. He needs to retire his Willie. <laughs> wow. I had no idea. Like, what is happening? Okay. <laughs> on that note, we will see you guys on Saturday. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of the week. Stay black. Stay happy. Keep reading. <sighs> Good night, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.